After spending the last month and a half exploring part of the Canadian Maritimes, including experiencing the highest tides in the world at the Bay of Fundy, road tripping all around the charming Prince Edward Island, checking out a few national parks and so much more, we hopped on a seven hour ferry from Nova Scotia to Newfoundland. Newfoundland is part of Newfoundland and Labrador, the easternmost province in Canada, which consists of both the island of Newfoundland and Labrador, which connects to the mainland. And over the next few days, we're going to be experiencing it for the very first time. This province was what we were most looking forward to in Canada this year, but will it live up to our high expectations? Have we said that we love it here? <laughs> Have we made it clear? Once or twice, maybe. Because we love it here. After arriving on the ferry last night, we stayed at this parking lot nearby along this stunning stretch of coastline with all this rocky barren terrain and many homes around that all have this simple one color rectangular design that kind of reminds us of what you might see in Iceland or something. It was the best introduction to Newfoundland we could have asked for and today our plan is to drive to the Port O Port Peninsula which is about a two and a half hour drive north of here. I'm so excited! <laughs> We're still only 10 minutes into the province and I'm already mind blown. It is just so epic here. This scenery just from the highway is just... <laughs> we just, our, our jaws are just dropped. Newfoundland is known for being pretty windy and we're currently in an area called Wreck House, which is known for having winds up to 200 kilometers per hour that have knocked trains off of tracks and semi-trucks off the road. Thankfully, they have a sign well before you reach this area that tells you what the current wind speed is. That way you know if it's safe to drive or if you need to hang back and wait. And today the wind speed's only 16 kilometers per hour, so it's just a light breeze, so it's totally safe for us to drive. There are so many things to do here in Newfoundland. Every time I look at the map, I find like 10 more things I wanna do. And when I was researching today's route, I came across the Starlight Trail, which looks epic, so we're gonna go check it out. The trail has been pretty steep and it's also a little brushy at times. Flashbacks to bushwhacking in Alaska. Oh my gosh, wow. <laughs> It's official, I am 100% obsessed with this place. We haven't even been here 24 hours and I am deeply and madly in love. This place reminds me of so many different places, but most of all, I feel like I'm back in Alaska, especially the Chugach Mountains right near Anchorage. Just these like barren looking mountains, but they're completely green covered, and all the little waterfalls. Man, it's so pretty here. Besides the wind, another thing to be aware of while driving here in Newfoundland are moose. There are about 500 moose collisions per year and multiple people emailed us warning us not to drive at night because that's when they're most active and they're harder to see. So we'll be sticking to daylight driving only. 
while Adam drives. I'm playing the role of Moose Patrol. I'm just scanning all of the terrain to see if there are any moose that could dart out in front of us. When we were in New Brunswick, we actually saw a moose really close to the road during the day. And thankfully, it went back into the woods and not into the road, because that is an animal you do not want to hit. One thing that makes Newfoundland unique is its culture. It's a mix of French, English, Irish, and indigenous cultures, and is said to be unlike anywhere else in Canada. After quite a bit of driving, we've made it to the port au port Peninsula, which is said to be the hub of French Newfoundland culture. For years, the French had fishing rights to the area, and it wasn't until 1904 until Newfoundland gained full control over the West Coast. We're currently at Cape St. George, and what's super neat is that there's a traditional French bread oven here that we hear some locals still use and will sell bread for during certain hours. We unfortunately didn't make it here in time for the bread, but there are some free campsites here, so we're gonna go try to snag one. Holy cow, this is epic. We had heard that Newfoundland was an amazing province for boondocking, and so far we are two for two for gorgeous free campsites. Just look at this right here. These cliffs are absolutely insane. They are so steep and tall and dramatic. And when we look out of our back windows in our van, all we can see is just endless ocean. I think we're becoming a bit of a broken record, but this place is just so wild. Oh my gosh, there are 15 to 20 seals just floating in the water right here. And they're all grunting and like barking and like, oh my gosh, how cool. What a way to start the day. Just down the road is a waterfall called Hidden Falls that we ran out of time for yesterday. So before we hit the road, we're gonna check it out. This waterfall is hidden off the main road, so if you didn't know it was here, you would definitely miss it, but don't miss it because it is so beautiful and it's just a super short and easy walk to go check it out. Nothing like a little waterfall mist in the morning. It feels so nice. Bring a shower. Yeah. Bring a shower. yeah. The Port of Port Peninsula was well worth a little detour, but for the rest of the day, we're going to be heading to Lark Harbor, which should be another gorgeous coastal area. But first we have to make a quick stop in Corner Brook, which is actually the largest city on this side of the island to go grocery shopping. We had been warned that the grocery selection, especially the produce, is not as great in the smaller towns. So we figured this was our best bet to stock up for a bit. And I'm weirdly excited about it because for some reason, we just think it's super fun to just check out different grocery stores when we travel. actually pretty big and really nice in my head I keep comparing Newfoundland to Alaska that it's gonna be super remote and we're not gonna have a very good selection of stuff but they had a pretty good selection of a lot of things not so much in other things and the prices actually weren't that bad we also got to hear our first glimpse of the famous Newfoundland dialect I'm not sure how to explain it but they definitely have a unique way of speaking here and it was just really cool to finally get to hear it It has been almost impossible to not just film this entire drive out here. The scenery is just... I've caught myself so many times thinking, oh my gosh, look at that, oh wow, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's just, it's just 
like, ah! the entire time. There's been zero ugly parts. Yeah, no. Of any drive we've done in Newfoundland. Nope. We have made it to Lark Harbor, which is an area surrounded by mountains and has all these rocky mounds that are just jutting up with all of these coves in between them. And we have a couple different things that we want to see here. And first, we're going to hike to a cove somewhere back in there called Wild Cove. The trail was pretty short and easy, only 3.7 kilometers round trip and ends at this cove with these massive rock walls on either side. Apparently it's called Cedar Cove, even though it says Wild Cove on the map. Whatever you call it, it is gorgeous. Wow. There's so many sticks, it's a house made of sticks. Oh my gosh, your dream house, your dream house. The main reason we came out this way was to see Bottle Cove, which is an extremely picturesque cove that I saw a photo of years ago and knew I had to see someday. And to see the iconic view of it, we're gonna do a short hike up to Sunset Rock. Oh yeah. Wow. I think what I love the most about Newfoundland so far is just the scale of it. Everything is just so grand and massive. Like the rocks in front of us, they are, they're just ginormous. It just has this like larger than life. I know that's the Yukon territory slogan, <laughs> but it has like this larger than life feeling to it. And I think especially in this spot, there is just so much to look at. There's these massive mountains. There's a sea cave over there. There's a beautiful green meadow over there, forest. And then obviously the beautiful blue water right here. There is just such a variety of scenery here. You could never get bored. It kind of has everything you could ever want. Have we said that we love it here? <laughs> Have we made it clear? Once or twice, maybe. Because we love it here so much. This morning we're hiking the Cape Blow Me Down Trail, which is gonna take us to an insane viewpoint over the area. It's about seven kilometers round trip with 600 meters of elevation gain. So it's gonna be a tough one. One thing I'm really loving about the hikes here in Newfoundland so far is that you spend a good amount of time above the tree line. So you just have expansive views, which really makes the uphill climbing, which if you can't tell, I'm breathing very heavy. It's been very uphill, but having views like this on the way up makes it much more enjoyable.
That was definitely the hardest hike we have done in a while, but I loved it. That is where we started, all the way down there. There are 360 degree views from up here. You have the Bay of Islands over here, and then there's a bunch of just mountains all over there. It is just breathtaking. With a name like Blow Me Down, I thought we'd get to the top and be blown right off the top, but it's not bad at all. There's just a light breeze just cooling us off. Besides hiking to this peak, there's also a quick waterfall hike that you can do from the same trailhead. So we're gonna hike back down and go check that out real quick. That is a big waterfall. Got a big pool at the bottom too. Might have to take a dip. He keeps falling in. <laughs> I don't know if that was refreshing or painful. We've seen a bunch of Newfoundlands, epic scenery so far, but another thing that we love to experience when traveling is local food. And there are a handful of local dishes that we hope to try during our time here. But there's one in particular that we wanna try first, but unfortunately we can't get it for a couple days, so we're gonna fast forward to then. Sunday and in Newfoundland that means one thing, it's Jigs Dinner Day, baby! Jigs Dinner is a classic Newfoundland dish with Irish origins that's typically eaten on Sundays or for special occasions. It contains salt beef, turnip, cabbage, potato, carrot, and peace pudding, which is all boiled, giving it another name of boiled dinner. We hear the best is a homemade version, but a local viewer told us that you can also get it in a Big Stop restaurant, which is in an Irving gas station on Sundays, so we came to the one in Deer Lake to try it out. And it's actually really nice in here for a gas station restaurant. When they brought this out, I straight up gasped because there's like a whole potato on the plate. <laughs> this is the heaviest plate. She had to have me grab it from her because she couldn't set it down. It's probably like eight pounds. <laughs> I'm gonna try this peas pudding. It's made with yellow split peas or split yellow peas. Hmm. I don't really know what that tastes like to be honest. Mmm. The salt beef is really good. It has a nice salty flavor to it. It's pretty tender, it falls off. It's actually on a bone, which I wasn't expecting, and it falls off the bone pretty well. Mm. This is such an interesting meal because it's all boiled. So boiled always kind of has like the same texture. So everything on here has a very similar texture to it. And it, nothing has like seasoning on it. So it's not overly flavorful, which we were expecting coming into this. It's not supposed to be overly flavorful, but the salt beef is amazing. It has really, really good flavor. Mm. That definitely has the most flavor of anything on here. Good salty, savory flavor, good and tender. I think this whole plate would benefit from a, like a nice gravy to go over Ooh, the top. Yeah. You know, maybe the poutine gravy. It normally comes with a figgy duff pudding, but ours came with an apple pudding and hubba hubba. Oh my gosh. And then there's a brown sugar sauce over the top. Oh my lanta. Oh yeah. Mmm. Oh, good. This is the star of the Jigs dinner. <laughs> but we better get to work because this is a lot of food and we weren't sure how much food it would be, so we ordered a whole other plate of food too. And this in itself is just such a hearty meal, but we need it. We need to stock up on the calories and the fuel because tomorrow we are starting a very big adventure. <laughs> 